My name's Ron Livingston. I'm playing a, a man named Lewis Nixon. He was the intelligence officer for Easy Company in the Second World War, 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, and I shot a video diary. Here it is. We spent one night out in a, in, uh, in a shelter, these bombed out buildings. The problem with that is the buildings are all bombed out. Well, this is enough then to get on the what is. Some of them have no roofs and there's holes in them. And of course we had guard duty that night, so nobody really got a lot of sleep. I shared quarters with Captain Dye and Lieutenant Stokey, uh, which is nice in that I didn't have to do guard duty, but you know, I'm also sharing quarters with Captain Dye and Lieutenant Stokey. It was very, very cold, and uh, Captain Dye says, "Here, I'll show you an old, here's an old infantry trick. Take your, take those, get those jump gloves there, and you put them on your feet. It keeps your feet warm." I said, "You're, you're, you gotta be kidding, right? <laughs> right? Is this like, okay? This is what happens when the new guy comes. They, you know, we do the thing. We get the gloves on the feet, and then uh, he has gloves on his feet. So for about half an hour, I was like, okay, uh, thanks, thanks for the tip." About a half an hour later, I put my gloves on my feet. By God, I was warm all night. <laughs> that was sort of the turning point when everybody kind of crossed the exhaustion line and really started getting tired. What are we at? Day six? Day five? Day six? Oh, man, day 20. Look at Bacani. Let's see. Look at there was one day when they said, uh, okay, everyone's all banged up. We're gonna take the afternoon and everyone's just gonna relax and heal up and rest. Order of the day is to relax. Let's get our bodies healed up so we can start doing our jump stuff. You understand? Yes, sir. yes, Sergeant. You're gonna square yourselves away if you wish. You can spit shine your little boogies if you wish. You can do whatever you want if you wish. And it was a trick. They basically got us all with, the, with all our gear off and, and uh, and 20 minutes later, they came in screaming, OK, we're moving out, we're moving out, you know, and everyone had to throw their shit on and go. There was constantly something to do. And uh, if there was nothing else to do, there was polishing your boots. Hour three of boot polishing. You could get things to, to look all right, but it would take a good 45 minutes, an hour. You get the can and the polish, and you, know, you have to do it with the little dip the water and the time-honored spit shine of the thing. Polish and polish and polish and polish and polish. That hour that you had spent polishing your boots turned out eventually to be about the best hour of the day because you were inside, you're sitting still, there's heat, nobody's jumping out of a corner, throwing a grenade at you, and we'd, we'd get to talking and just kind of shooting the shit about the day. Randleman was a... Uh... I was in the Jeep today in Sobel and, uh, yeah, we have Sobel and Randleman, you know, trying to start the Jeep, the old, you know, beautiful old 1942 Lewis Jeep. Randleman's trying to start it up, it's not going to start. He tries again, it's not starting, tries again, it's not starting. He's going on and on and on and on, trying to start the thing. So finally, I take weapons, we all get behind it, push it down the hill to jump start it, doesn't start. Try again, doesn't start. Follow it all the way down the bottom of the hill, battery's dying. We push it all the way back up the top of the hill. Here comes Sarge. Sarge gets in, and you know, with one turn of the key, starts it up and takes off. Wait, so far, right? Just right up front. He totally showed us up. So now the joke is, how many how many sergeants does it take to start an old Jeep? One. How many officers? None. Because it doesn't matter how many you have, money you have, no officer can do anything right. <laughs> it got to be pretty relaxing. It was kind of nice. They still look like shit. <laughs> 